of the womb to seek reward. As arrows are in the hands of the mighty men, so are children of the youth. Let's thank God for his mercy over all our children. Father, thank you for your mercy over all our children. Thank you for your love, your faithfulness, your divine protection. Thank you for always being there with us in our darkest times. Thank you for not allowing the enemies to rejoice over us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's begin to welcome Let's begin to welcome the Holy Spirit into this vineyard. Let's tell him to come and take absolute control in everything that we do today. The mic, the keyboard, the weather, let everything work in accordance with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. Lion of Judah, we worship you. Thank you for allowing us to witness this children's program and for allowing us to see the last Sunday in the month of May. As we continue, go with us and perfect all the things that we do today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Our maker, the God, our maker, the ancient of days, the I am that I am. 
Bye-bye. 
we 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 we
forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to be saying a poem. When things look to the darkest, look to the light, look to Jesus. He's, light, he's the light of the world. He's Lord of all. He protects those who trust in him. He, he supplies what is needed to those who believe and expect to be blessed. Don't look to Jesus, rely upon him, even when things seem to be going wrong, even when you need him the most at your darkest moment. Jesus light will sh for Jesus is light, his light will shine. Good day everyone, I'm here to adore to you to let your light shine. Let your light shine, as your light shines on Je as your light shines on, as the light shines on others, the love of Jesus shines on you. So encourage those who are weak and strengthen those, strengthen the faith hearted. See the good, see the possibilities, see the opportunities to say a kind word. Then love the Lord, avoid evil, condemn no one, give blessings to all, keep the faith as you see, as you see and know it. For as your light shines on others, the love of Jesus shines on you. Thank you. Please let's clap for our children. Thank you all. You can go back to your seats. God bless you all. Our next presentation is our drama group. We are expecting them now. It's about a Christian home how we behave in the home with our children, because it's our children week, how we act with them, what we teach them, and what they have inside of them that they can make use of even when we are not there. May God bless us as we watch and be blessed in Jesus' name. your class teacher or any of the headmaster? My class teacher was not around at the time it happened. Okay, let this not repeat itself again. Do you understand? Yes, Daddy. So, honey, what are we going to have for breakfast this morning? Because the one you prepared yesterday was so delicious. I think you can prepare it again this morning. Oh, honey, we can't have that again. Uh, don't worry. I'll cook something more delicious for you, okay? Okay. Daddy, what about my school? 
scotion fee. The scotion fee. I paid it part of your school fees yesterday. I paid it. Daddy, can I have money for my snacks? Okay, you have it as you're going to school this morning. Yeah, before you be late, let us do. Too sure, Baba is your boot. I win this game, eh? Uh, ah! Millions, millions. Ah! Too sure, Baba is your boot. Mommy, good morning. Let us pray. Which prayer? You can see I'm getting ready to pray, Marcus. Please don't disturb me. Go and meet your father. I will pray with you. We are not going to pray today. Ah uh ah. -uh. I said I'm preparing for Marcus. Go and meet your father. He will do it for with you. I beg. Me. Okay, give me money for my excursion. Do I look like I have money? Eh? Is your father not gambler? He's baby the book gambler. Since I'm married, this man's been doing gambling since. So please, he has the money, he'll pay for you. Daddy, good morning. Daddy, good morning. Yes, dear. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Give me money for my excursion. I don't have money. You can meet your mother. She's a trader. She said I should come and meet you. Ah, this woman safe. Honey, darling, sugar in my tea, cockroach in my cup. What are you doing today? I beg, I beg, I beg, please. I know what you want. I don't have the money. Are you not buying your book, Ambla? Eh? Since I married, that's what you've been doing. So please pay by yourself. Shut up, Joe. So all the sweet sweet name I'm calling you. Where do you, where do you throw it? It's under the chair. Go and collect it. It's me. I'm telling you, shut up, Abby. Don't worry. We'll see whether I'll pay that thing. No? Sorry, nah. See, yesterday night I had a dream. My ninja came to me. Gave me two show games. If I win that game, I'll change your life. My life. It's my life you want to change, Abby. For the past five years, I'm saying you want to change my life. Not my life you'll change. So please. Pay it in by yourself. Leave me alone. Uh uh. Ah, go and meet your mother. She'll give you the money. If you near me, I will slap you. Don't try that nonsense with me. Go and meet her. She will not do you anything. See, come, 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 come. This man is calling me. Tell her I'm not around. Hello? Good morning, ma. My daddy is around. He told me I should tell her that he's not around. Give me the phone, Joe. Coconut head. Small like an old lie. Hello, madam. Yes, I have your money here. Yes, nah. It's not that I don't have your money. My wife had an accident. She broke her leg. She's in a coma right now. Yes, nah. It's life matter I'm telling you about, ma. Yes, bye, 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 bye. I be I'm the one that break leg. It's me. A whole me. I break my leg. Do I look like I've broken my leg? Don't worry. Only you lie, lie. Only oh, you damn lie. You're not going to church. We do you all than that. Don't worry. Your time is coming. Ah, too my child, come and collect this money, Joe. beg. So you even have the money. I, 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 Allowing me to talk, then calling you sweet names. I beg, forget that thing. I don't Let's blame you. Ah. Ha 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 
guns, I feel you. Now it's my turn to call my guns. Hey, Kukeka! Hey, Kukeka! Jesus. Be paralyzed in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire in the mighty name of Jesus. No! I will kill you with my hand. Let me call out my God. My Lord! My Lord! Please call my help me. In the name of Jesus, I command you back to send that the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible said in Exodus 14, 14, oh Lord, you will fight our battle and you give us strength. Holy Ghost fire. Go back to send that the mighty name of Jesus. Not die in the mighty name oh, of Jesus. Jesus. You we shall be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. Them. Go back this, to send in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch my anointing. Go back to send in the mighty name of Jesus. Go back to send in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, King of King, oh Lord, come now, and rescue us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hand. Come and rescue us in the mighty name of Jesus. Come and rescue us in the mighty name of Jesus. Take control in the mighty name of Jesus. Back to send that. Holy Ghost, fire. Holy Ghost, fire. Wherever you come from, oh Lord, Holy Ghost, fire. Back to send in the mighty name of Jesus. Back to send in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, fire. 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 fire. Wherever you come from, oh Lord. Father, save us, oh Lord. Father, we shall not die, oh Lord. We shall not die, oh Lord. Father, come and rescue us. Come and rescue us. Come and rescue us. I command you, Holy Ghost, fire. Holy Ghost, fire. fire. Holy Ghost, fire. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, oh Lord. Father, you say that shall not be death in your kingdom, oh Lord. Oh Lord, I, I plead you, oh Lord, for Lord, come and rescue all this one. For Lord, rescue them as you heal Lazarus, oh Lord. For Lord, come and heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you, oh Lord, for Lord, heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. For Lord, for Lord, heal them, oh Lord. For Lord, guide them and protect them, oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. For Lord, heal them, heal them, protect them and guide them, oh Lord. For Lord, I command you in the mighty name of Jesus. For Lord, I command you to rise up in the mighty name of Jesus. Rise up now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, oh Lord. Thank you. Thank you, oh Lord. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Eshada. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Adam. Oh Lord. Thank you. Oh Lord. Thank you. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, oh Lord. Thank you. Simple excursion they went to. Uh uh, it's ready. It's where are they? Oh, Jesus. So, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 Hey, Jesus, oh, you can see, you can see what you have done. You have killed me. Hey, Baba God. Hey, what happened to you? I thought you were dead. Oh, God. What happened to you? Hey, are you all right? What happened? What happened? What happened? I was dead. Then some of my classmates prayed and I resurrected. Ah, oh, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. You can. So, but you okay? Are you feeling well? Hey, thank God. Don't worry, don't worry. Oh yeah, sit down. Oh, yeah. Sit down. Sit down. See, we need to be teaching these children how to pray. Can see yes. so that they will have avoided that situation. Yes, honey, we need to teach them how to pray. Let's start if, if, tonight. 
Yes, we must start. Let's go and start a new life. Dear parents, as you can see, if we had taught our children how to pray, we would have been able to avoid this situation. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, verse 6, that we should train up a child the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Dear parents, family consists more than only you. It consists of the father, mother, and the child. Train up your child so that later they, they won't depart from it. Thank you, and happy children's day. Sunday 
in the month of May. May has been a month of the grace to break new grounds. And I pray for every one of you, including our children, that we all break new grounds in this season against all odds in the mighty name of Jesus. I also want to say to all the children, happy Children's Day. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. I pray that God will cause you to be favored and his grace will envelop you all round about and the greatness that God has established in your destiny. It will come to materialization without delays in the name of Jesus. This morning, I'm going to be speaking on what I titled Modern Day Parenting. Modern Day Parenting. I will take my text from Joshua chapter 4, verse 20 to 24. Joshua 4, verse 20 to 24. The Bible says, And those twelve stones which took out, which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up in Gilgal. Then he spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What are these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel crossed over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan before you until you had crossed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed over, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. May the word of God come alive in all our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, we thank you for a privilege to be in your presence. Thank you, O Lord God, for the blessings that you have already released. Thank you for thus far you've been with us in this special Children's Day service. My Father, as your word is about to come forth, we ask, O Lord God, that you will give us the grace to receive, you will give us the heart to accept, you will give us the humility to transform. My Father, I pray that your word will comfort expressly. There will not be any form of ambiguity. My Lord and my God, we that hear your word, give us the grace to be hearers and doers in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So children in the house, I want you to shout hallelujah. Now I want you to be quiet and also listen because there's also a word for us as children. Beloved, today is a special day. Amen? And we need to ask ourselves some pertinent questions. In fact, I, I had no idea that this is what they plan to do in their drama. And that drama has spoken a lot about what I want to speak to, to us this morning. We need to ask ourselves as parents or as persons of influence, you know, taking full responsibility in parenting the children under our care. Do we serve as guards, as role models? And do we have a sense of assurance to motivate the children in our care? These are questions. Amen? Can our children trust us to stand by them? Can our children trust us? Amen? These are questions. Are you living by example? Or are we showing bad examples to the children that are under our care? You know, and I'm very careful to say children under our care because some of us, we have children of other that we didn't give birth to, but they're under us. Every one of us that is an adult, you might not know, but there are people that are looking up to you. When we were growing up as children, amen, we had neighbors that we wanted to be like. And some of those neighbors influenced us positively and some influenced us negatively. So don't think that, oh, I don't have any child. So this message is not for me. Because there are people that are looking up to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Children, teachers, 
please let's quieten them a little more. Amen. Let's not just stand. Let's try to quieten them a little more. Praise the name of the Lord. We must ask ourselves questions. Amen. Because these children must be brought up by showing example, giving instructions, monitoring and enforcing and above all must be brought up in the way of the Lord. Proverbs 22 and verse 6. Proverbs 22 and verse 6. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. From our opening text, where we read in Joshua chapter 4, Joshua set a standard for which things must be done. Some things that we serve as a memorial. Some things that we serve as a guard to the upcoming children to explain what had happened in the past and the reason why this was done and the sacred need to serve and to fear God. Amen? To serve and to fear God. To serve as a guard for even us today as parents. We must never lose the essence of providing our children with the history of where they come from. It is our responsibility as parents, as people of influence, as adults, amen, as role models to make sure that we give our children the history from where they are coming from. They should not, they, we should not leave them as if they have no direction. What God has done for the family, letting them know that all you are today is by the grace of God and nothing else. Amen? It is our responsibility to show our children what God has done for us so that they too can have an understanding that they need to look up to God. Never make a mistake of thinking that they are too young. Oh, they are too small. That is a mistake that we make. And look, we are talking about modern day parenting. Praise the name of the Lord. Every form of parenting that excludes the word of God and the way of God, we end up being in shatters. Every form of parenting. Amen? We've discussed some modern day parenting in Sunday school. But I want you to know that no matter how modern we are, no matter how developed we are, no matter how civilized we become, if you remove the way of God, the word of God, from your method of parenting, that parenting or that way you are doing, it will be shattered. Because it is the word of God that can stand the test of time. Psalm 78 and verse 4. Psalm 78 and verse 4. It says, we will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. Amen? From generation to generation, the word of God must be passed across, must be transited. We must teach our children the word of God. We must live the word of God so that they will see it and also learn and imbibe it as a way of life. There are various stages in parenting. Various stages. Amen? There is a stage of instructing. Are you following me this morning? There is a stage of instructing, a stage of teaching and showing the way. Praise the name of the Lord. There is this is when they are tender and they don't know they are right from their left. Amen? It is the foundational stage in parenting where you need to instruct, you must teach, and you must show example. So if you are a parent or you are somebody that the children of, you are looking, they are looking up to, you have children that you can influence and you don't instruct them, you don't teach them, and you don't show them by way of example, then you are setting a bad example. You must instruct, you must be intentional to teach them, 
And most importantly, you must show by example. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. There is also a stage in parenting of enforcing what you have taught them. Amen? When you do not teach your children anything, what are you going to enforce? That's why I said that we're going to have questions that we need to answer and we need to ponder on. You must teach your children when they are tender. Then they will get to a certain age where you begin to enforce the things that you have taught them. Amen? Because they will want to do what they like. But you as a parent, you as a brother, an uncle, an auntie, someone of influence, you must enforce what you have taught them. Amen? What you have taught them, what you have instructed them, you must enforce it. This stage is where their wisdom begin to develop. Because nowadays, the wisdom of the children, they develop very early. Very, very early. So at the stage where they begin to know, they have a sense of responsibility, then you must begin to enforce what you have taught them. And this is usually in their teenage years. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Then there's another stage also in parenting, where all that you can do is to advise and to counsel. Amen? The child is grown up, is in university, you don't follow him all around anymore, is taking full resp responsibility of himself, is becoming a man, is becoming a lady, you can no longer begin to enforce. All you can do is to counsel and advise. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. This is when they are grow they've grown up and they have a mind of their own. They have their own hopes, they have their own aspirations, and they even have their own visions. Amen? You cannot begin to teach and instruct a child that is already grown up. You have already failed. And God will have mercy on you. You have failed. It is not when you, in the stage of advice and counsel, that's when you want to now begin to teach and instruct and enforce. You will meet the resistance of your life. You will meet it. And you begin to say, this child is stubborn, this child is that, because you failed to teach and instruct when they were tender, when they were little, when you have instilled everything that you need to instill in them by the leading of God. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Now, I will tell us methods of raising godly children in a moment. As modern day parenting, what are the things that our parenting must showcase? Amen? What are those things that every one of us as parents or will be parents, as uncles or aunties, what are the things that our guidance must show in the life of the children that God has given unto us. Number one is that we must be guided by the word of God. That's number one. I don't, there is no way you will succeed in parenting if you remove the word of God. There is no way. There is absolutely no way. There is nothing you are going to do that you will see that it will not change. The only thing that is constant is the word of God. It's the word of God. You must raise up a child with the foundation of the word of God. The scriptures, the biblical principles must be imbibed in your child if you want that child to showcase the glory and the praise of God. Any method of parenting that excludes the tenets of the scripture will only lead to failure, will lead to errors, and to regrets. Psalm 127 verse 3. That was the opening text that um, they used in opening the service this morning. Psalm 127 verse 3. It says, Behold, children are heritage from God. That's where they come from. Children come from God. So, you will be wise to raise the children under your care with 
the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Children come from God and you need to use the word of God in molding them. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he's old, he or she will not depart from it. Proverbs 22 and verse 6. Beloved, if the foundation is faulty, it becomes practically impossible to build any lasting structure upon it. When your foundation is not good, you build the thing with tear. There will be a crack. The building will collapse. Everything will be a waste. Resources gone. Some things might not be recovered again. Why? Because the foundation is faulty. So what people do that are wise, and it's for people that are wise, they spend time, efforts. Amen? They spend quality time in making sure that the foundation is solid. And to have a solid foundation in the life of the children is to feed them and build them in the word of God. Once you can do so, then you have a solid foundation. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, what should your parenting showcase as modern day parenting? Raise them to be leaders. That's number two. You can write all these things down because these things are important. Whether you are married, whether you are single, whether you have a child, whether you don't have a child, you are already a person of influence. And people or children are going to look up to you. Number two, raise them to be leaders. Raise them to be leaders. Now, you must teach every child under your influence to believe in themselves. Amen? You saw when they were doing their memory verse. You saw different stages of children that believe in themselves. It's not a matter of age. It's a matter of of them having the consciousness of believing in themselves. Amen? You must let them know that they have a God ordained leadership goal. Every child has a leadership goal. Every child. Every child has a potential to be the best. And you must let them know. It's not something that you will keep quiet about. You can tell them that do you know you are going to be great? Tell it to them. Let them repeat it. That say to them that let them say, I shall be great. Let them be conscious about it. I'm giving you methods of parenting. You must let them know that you'll be great. Greatness is not a function of the money in your pocket. No, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Recently, I think it was last year or so, there was a child from nowhere. The child did not come out from the best university or the best school in town. But the guy was able to make a drone. And companies overseas, they were dragging him. I think they said the guy went to Finland or so. And nobody knew his father. Nobody knew his mother. He didn't come from any elite. That, because a lot of people think Greatness has to do with the money in your pocket. No. Greatness is the talents that God has put inside the children. That when they begin to manifest, then greatness will walk to them and embrace them. And every child has a God-given potential. Every child. Whether the child came to the world by mistake, whether it's from a single parent, that is not the issue. Every child has a potential for greatness. So you as a parent or a, an uncle, an auntie, a brother of influence over children, you must let them believe in themselves. Amen? You must let them know that they are leaders. Now, how do you teach a child that is a leader? How do you teach a child? It is by teaching the child to serve others. That's the secret. To be a leader, you must know how to serve others. That is the secret. That's why you don't have leaders. That's why you see leaders as cast. You will see a hundred people. Only two people are leaders. Every other person, they'll be hiding, they'll be ducking. They want to take the stage. Why? Because
because they are not taught how to serve others. Once you can serve others, automatically you become a leader. You become a leader. Teach him or her how to look out for others and not just themselves alone. These are the responsibilities that God has put in our hands as parents. And today, as we are doing special service for the children, is the best opportunity for us to address these issues. You must teach them how to think of other people and not only themselves. They must not just be self-centered, but they must be other-centered. In other words, thinking of other people. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. My elder son, there is nothing that you are going to do that he will not tell you to get for his junior ones. Just so, don't even bother. If you are going to get him something, he will say, where is the one for the sister? Where is the one for the brother? That's the first thing he will tell you. And these are potentials of who will be a leader. Not a child that thinks of himself alone. I say, oh, no, no, it's, it's just a small child. It is when they are small that you have to instill it. Do I hear an amen to that? We must support them in their quest for excellence and success. Don't come and be saying, oh, this thing you are doing, your eyes too big. Your eyes too big. You, you have too, your, you know, the things that you are looking for is too much. This boy, you put me in trouble. This guy, you put me in trouble. No! Support them in their quest for excellence. Support them. Don't say, ah, this child is running too fast. You have to slow down. And you begin to suppress the potentials of excellence in them. No. That is not the way to of parenting. You should support them and help them in their quest for excellence and success. Let them receive the right support in education, home values, career path, and they will manifest their greatness. Amen? Jesus said in Matthew 20, verse 26, Matthew 20, verse 26, he says, yet it shall not be done, it shall not be to, it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. In other words, you want to be great, you must be ready to serve others. Teach your children how to think about other people, how to serve others, and I can tell you, before you say the word Jack, they will be in front. They will be in front. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Another thing that our parenting must showcase as modern day parenting is that we must set boundaries early in their lives. Set boundaries early in the life of the child. Set boundaries. Set boundaries. Set boundaries. Children liberty. In other words, children that want everything that they wish. You know, there is a syndrome that people will say, oh, the suffer I suffered. My child must not suffer it. And because of that, everything that you can afford, you just you throw at them. They want a phone, you give it to them. They want this, you give it to them. Children liberty, getting all they need or all they desire will only increase a proportion in, you know, in their lives of negative sense of entitlement. If you give a child everything that they want, the way they want it, all you are doing is you are enabling that child to have a negative sense of entitlement. And because they will grow up believing that anything they want is their right to have it. And is that correct? It's not correct. Because even God our Father, there are some things you ask God and God will say no. No in the sense that it, this thing is not meant for you. Or God will say, wait for it. It's not the right time for you to have this blessing. Or God will say yes. So, it is the same sense that you should use in raising your children. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. When they begin to have some sense of responsibility, then you can give them things that will enhance that responsibility. You must set boundaries. Amen? You must set boundaries. For example, they cannot own a phone 
amen, until it is a necessity for them. So, why should a child have a phone? For what reason? Is he working? How is he getting the recharge the card? Even with our parents, sometimes our phones don't have call credit. So, why should a child own a phone? For what reason? And the worst of it is that you give them phones that are internet enabled at the stage that they don't have full understanding of what they should do and what they should not do. Even we as adults, we get tempted and we fall in temptation. Talk less of the children that are vulnerable. If they must use a phone, let them use your own. Oh, we have an assignment. We have to use internet. Use your, your parents' phone. When you finish using it, they drop the phone. And you can go and check what they have done. Because it's your phone. You can look at the history. Amen? So, modern day parenting has to do with setting boundaries. Putting limitations on what a child should have access to. Remember that they are children. Children. And how do you know a child? They don't know their right from their left. Abby? That's how we used to know. That's why you see an adult that is behaving like who doesn't have sense. What do we call them? Say, ah, this man is behaving like a child. Because children are known to be vulnerable, not to know their right from their left. They are known to need care and guidance. So why do you expose them with telephones? Praise the mighty name of the Lord. You love your child, you will discipline them and not allow them to misbehave. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 12. It says, Proverbs 3 verse 12. It says, For the Lord reproves him who he loves as a father, the son in whom he delights. A father or a mother that loves his or her children, you must discipline them because you want the best to come out of them. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. We are still talking about parenting. Modern day parenting. What should our parenting exhibit? Number four, you must discipline your child. You must discipline your child. Any parent or guardian who fails in a place of instilling discipline, we have God to answer to. Because the children, they come from God. And God gives them to us to nurture, to care, so that they will become the great and glorious um, child that he has created. Amen? So we are to discipline them. You must discipline your child and every child under your control. Amen? You must discipline them. Whether it is at home as a parent or a guardian, whether it is in the school as a teacher, whether it is in the church as a worker, discipline your, the child under your control. I see Pastor Pamela Dilly every time, and I like it. He it won't, it won't allow the children to misbehave. He will discipline them. He will punish them. They will say, oh, it's too wicked. It, your role that you have failed in is what he's doing for you. So anytime he does it for you, go and congratulate him and thank him. It's because it is what you have failed that he's doing for you. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Never shy away from the very important responsibility that God expects from you to discipline your child. Don't say, I love my children too much. Therefore, I cannot discipline them. If you love your child, amen, you will discipline them. Proverbs 23, 13 and 14. Proverbs 23, 13 and 14. It says, do not withhold discipline from a child. Do not withhold. Do not withhold discipline from a child. He says, if you strike him with a rod, he will not die. <laughs> the scripture. He will not die. Amen? He said, if you strike him with a rod, you will save the soul from Shoel. In other words, you will save him from the path of destruction. You leave them. I remember when we were growing up, we had people who were very envious of because their parents, they were not disciplining them. They would tell us, you cannot go to party, you cannot do this, you cannot eat chewing gum, you cannot do this. They come, they will give you. They knock on your head. They will reset your brain. And today, look at us. 
we are strong, we are capable, we are disciplined. But those people that we were trying to be like, that were envious of, that had free for all, they became frivolous, of no consequence. They couldn't amount to anything because there was no foundation that was built in their life. Discipline is crucial for the greatness of a child to manifest. And whose responsibility is it? It is your responsibility to discipline your children. Proverbs 13, 24. Proverbs 13, 24. It says, whoever spares the rod hates his son. Amen? In other words, you leave them, you don't cane them, you don't discipline them, you don't punish them, and you say you love them, you actually hate them. It says, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. Praise the name of the Lord. Proverbs 29, 17. So many scriptures. Proverbs 29, 17. Discipline your son. And of course, you know, includes your daughter as well. And he or she will give you rest. It will give you delight to your heart. You want to have rest. When you are, your child is grown up, oh, they, are, they, are, they become men and women, and you want to have peace, you have to discipline them. You will discipline them now so that tomorrow you will have rest. Proverbs 29, 15. Another scripture again. 29, 15 of Proverbs. It says the rod and the reproof, what do they do? It gives wisdom. It gives wisdom. It gives wisdom. But a child left to himself or to herself, what will he do? It will bring shame to the mother, including the father. The father cannot escape it too. It will bring shame. Shame. You know, I have seen so many parents who end up in disgrace. Disgrace. In shame. When their children show terrible behavior in the public place. You go out. You see them, you see other children comporting themselves, behaving well. Then their children are misbehaving. They start to run. Behave yourself. They are bringing what you should have done in the house. Instill it in them. When they come to the public, they will disgrace you. You that is a parent, you will hide in shame. You hide in shame. You see all manner of things on social media children that bring shame. It's not the children's fault. It's the fault of the parents that refuse to discipline them and instill the tenets of the scriptures in their life. When they come to the public, they will come and showcase all the nonsense you have been allowing them to do in the house and they will bring you shame. And that will not be your portion. But you must be responsible to discipline your children. Two or three more to go. What do we, our modern parenting need to showcase? Amen? Number five now, be a model for what you want them to learn. What have I said? Be a model. Be a model for what you want them to learn. You know, when we say model, you know what they say? You see all this fashion model. The way they want you to wear the clothes, they will wear it for you. They will walk the way you should be walking. Then you will, look, you will now say, ah, this thing will fit me then what do you do? You go and buy the same thing. That's made of a model. So you must be a model to how you want your children to behave. The time of saying, do what I say, has passed. If you like, tell your children to do what you say, and you are doing something else, you are wasting your time. Look at the Baba Ejebuma. There is no way he can say things to that daughter of his that the lady will not be influenced with what she sees the parents doing. It's what the children see you do that they, will, that they will remember. They copy it. There are so many things my father told me. Half of them I can't remember. But I can remember what he was doing. Very well. I can remember it. I can remember what he would do when he wake up. How do we say? The way we behave is in my head. Is in my head. Amen? So you cannot be smoking and you will tell your child, my friend, smoking is not good though. He will forget. He will just remember that ah, my father will just wake up, he will say that chair, he will light the bensin and hedges and he will blow it and he will shout, hey, bring, bring that. 
is in his memory. And that memory influences him. Amen? So, you must model your child as how you want them to be. In other words, the way you will behave, it will reflect how you want your children to be. So, if you want your children to be glorious, if you want them to be great, you want them to be disciplined, you want them to behave well, what do you do? You behave that way. You behave that way. It's not you behaving the other way. Blame Mama Ijebu or Baba Ijebu and you tell your child, you know, you must make sure you save your money because you know, you must save for a rainy day. Then you, you are permit two from three. You are deceiving yourself. Is that permit two from three that your child will follow? Or let God have mercy. Amen? You cannot be different from what you are teaching your children. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You cannot be different. You must be what you are teaching them is what you too you are doing. It's what you are doing. You cannot answer your call and tell the, the person you are speaking to that you are in Victoria Island. Meanwhile, you are in Ogombo. And your child is right there looking at you. So the child will begin to know, okay, it's okay to lie. Lying is normal. There's no big deal. Amen? You cannot be a husband that is beating your wife right, left, and center. And you will not know that your child will grow up with low self-esteem. The beating you are giving your wife is affecting the confidence of your children. Go and look at all the children that came from home where they have domestic abuse, beating, pounding. Father is breaking the woman's head. The woman is throwing bottles. He said, oh, you want to poison my food? The children have low self-esteem. They have low self-esteem because of what you are showing them. What you are showing them. You cannot compare to a home where the husband and the wife they are loving themselves. They hold hands. They hug themselves. They peck themselves. You will see that the children they will have confidence. They have confidence. A home where father and mother are always quarreling. That child will grow up with that kind of behavior instilled in them. And they will have no regard for their wife. The wife will have no respect for the husband because that's how they were raised. So there's nothing I'm going to tell him or her. It's what they see you do that they will follow. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. First Peter chapter 3 and First Peter chapter 5 and verse 3. First Peter 5 verse 3. Not domineering over those in your church, but being examples to the flock. You must be an example to your children and to every child that you have influence over. And if you do so, God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Quickly, number six, you must raise up your child with values. Modern day parenting. Raise up your child with values. You see, there is so much responsibility upon us as parents and as guardians and as people that have influence over children. You must raise them up with values. Amen? You must teach them to value others. Have respect for others. Especially those that are older to them. You must have to teach them to have respect. Some children, you go to their homes, they just walk past you like this. Because their parents do not teach them how to greet. You must teach your children all these values. Teach them. Teach them. Teach them to have respect. To respect others. Teach them to have courtesy to also allow others, you know, to express themselves. Amen? Teach them to tell the truth. To tell the truth. Not telling them, tell this woman the call that I'm not at home. And thank God for the lady. She said, my daddy should tell you that he's not at home. Teach them. Don't inculcate those evil things. I say, ah, this my son is very wise. This my daughter is very wise. Teach them to have values. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Ephesians 6, verse 1 to 3. Another thing that you should do, which is number 7, is that you should build a wall of safety around the children. It's our responsibility to do so. Build a wall of safety around the children. 
parents, guardians, we are responsible to build a wall of safety around the children that are under our control. Children are very vulnerable and they must be protected from the evil plans of bad people who want to defile them, who want to molest them, or who want to take them into all forms of slavery and oppression. We must protect them. Amen? Teach them to speak up if anybody tries anything inappropriate to them. Teach them. Let them know the truth about their sexuality. Don't tell them that if a boy touch you, get pregnant. It's not true. Tell them the truth. Modern day parenting. Don't tell them all those jargons that they told you in 1902. This is 2022. The children are filled with knowledge and information. So you must tell them the truth the way it is. Let them know. Let them understand that their private part is private to them. And nobody should touch it. Even their parents. Because we have cases of parents that molest their own daughters. Or fathers. So teach them. Teach them. Teach them. Teach them. Don't shy away from it. Teach them. Show them. And let them know. So that they will be well informed. They won't go and be telling them jargons in school or from friends or from places that they are not supposed to learn. Oh, they, you know, they corrupt their minds. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Teach them to speak up when they are bullied in school. Let them have confidence. Teach them. Psalm 82, verse 3 and 4. Psalm 82, verse 3 and 4. It says, defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the land or from the hand of the wicked. Let us build a wall of safety round about every child that is under our control. So in conclusion this morning, children, I give from God. Amen? Children, I give from God. It is God that gives children. If you don't know that one, at least you know it now. It is God that gives children. They are a gift from God. And when he comes into a family and into the society, it is our responsibility to nurture this gift of God that he has given to us. We as parents and adults have a responsibility to protect and nurture them into the greatness that God has destined for them. We are to set godly standards that we stand the test of time, raising them in the fear of God and in the worship of God Almighty. Whatever we do in terms of raising the children that God has put in our care serves as a seed being sown and the harvest will either bring you joy and glory or it will bring you shame and regret. And I pray that you will sow the right seeds so that you will have the harvest of joy and the harvest of glory. Your children will make you proud. They will make you be filled with joy in the mighty name of Jesus. If we raise them well, you will receive joy and glory. But if on the contrary, then the reverse will be the case. Proverbs chapter 10, the very first verse. Proverbs 10 and verse 1. It said the proverb of Solomon, a wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is a sorrow to his parents. I pray God will give you all that you need to raise every child in your care the right way and that your heart will be filled with joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, we are going to pray. So, if you don't mind, if you can please rise to your feet. We will pray. Then, we will now bless our children. So, I want us to first of all thank God Amen. For the gift of children in our lives or in our families and of course in the church. Amen. Let's go ahead and begin to thank God for the gift of children. You can see them one full road. You know, these are our future. They are our tomorrow. And any church that does not have children, that church is already dying. It's already dying. Amen. So let us thank God for the children that God has given to us in our families. And let us also thank God for
for the children in the church. Every family, if there is no children, that family name will come to an end. But as far as there are children, that family will begin, you know, they keep on propagating, propagating, propagating. Praise the name of the Lord. So we say, Father, we thank you for the gift of children in our families and in your church. Praise Tabernacle. Please accept our thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's thank him. Let's be intentional to thank him. Father, we thank you. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. So we pray and say, Father, please release supernatural blessings. Please release supernatural blessings of greatness and divine protection upon every of our children in the name of Jesus. Let's make that our prayer. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you release supernatural blessings of greatness and divine protection upon every of our children. Let them be great. Let them be great. Let them be great. Let them have divine protection. Every evil that the enemy plans concerning their tomorrow, let your protection wipe it away in the name of Jesus. Bless them supernaturally and protect them divinely in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. We are still praying. You say, Father, everywhere we have failed in raising godly children, please have mercy on us and beginning from now, give us grace and strength to do what is right in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to talk to God. Everywhere we have failed, as parents, as teachers, as uncles, as guardians, everywhere we have failed in raising godly children. My Father, my God, we are praying for your mercy. Please have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. I'm beginning from now. The grace and the strength, the wisdom that we need to do what is right in terms of raising godly children, please release upon us, release upon us, release upon us, release upon us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. See, praying, we say, Father, the courage and strength, the courage and strength that is required to be a good parent or a guardian, please give unto me in the name of Jesus. Make that prayer very personal. Make it personal. Even if you are not married, you are going to be married tomorrow. You are going to have your own children. Make it personal. The courage and strength that is required of me to be a good parent. Father, give unto me. Give unto me. I want to be a good parent. I want to be a good father. I want to be a good mother. Lord, release that grace, that courage, that strength, that wisdom. Lord, release it unto me. Let me be counted among good parents in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Three more prayers we pray and say, Father, let all our children attain greatness in all areas of their lives in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and begin to pray for them. Let all our children, every children in my family, every children in my compound, every children in my neighborhood, every children in praise tabernacle, let them all attain greatness. Let them all attain greatness. Let there be no non-entity among them. Let there be no failures among them. Let there be no one that will live a life of rejection and calamity in the mighty name of Jesus. But let them all attain greatness, 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 greatness in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We pray and say, Father, keep sorrow, sickness, failure, error, and death far away from all children mentioned in praise tabernacle. Go ahead and begin to pray. Father, keep sorrow away. Keep failure away. Keep sickness away. Keep errors away. Keep death far away from every children mentioned in praise tabernacle in the mighty name of Jesus. Every children mentioned in our families. Every children in my household. Every children in my neighborhood. Keep failure, sorrow, sickness, error, death. Keep it far away from them in the mighty name 
of Jesus. And finally, you pray and say, Father, let your blood cover them all in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray the blood of Jesus. My Father, my God, let the blood, the blood of Jesus, let it cover all our children. Let it secure them. Let it cause them to be in peace. Let it protect them. Let it fight for them. Let it guide them. Let it open doors of favor for them. Let your blood avail for them all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. Thank you because you have answered our prayers. For we pray with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now I'm going to bless the children. So I think they can be on their feet. Amen. They, they, they might not need to come out, but where they are, they can stand up so that we don't disorganize everywhere. So let all the children stand up. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says in Mark chapter 10, verse 15 and 16. Mark chapter 10, verses 15 and 16. Jesus said, As shortly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he went further and said, and he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. So, every child mentioned in praise of Anakul, I bless you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. The blessing that comes from God, I release it upon you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak into your lives that the heavens, the earth, and every element will cooperate to support you. They will cooperate to help you. They will cooperate to advance your cause. In the name of Jesus. I pray that the mighty hand of God that carries power, that carries glory, that carries increase, will lift you up and keep you up in the mighty name of Jesus. The word of God says in 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9, it says, the eyes of the Lord go to and for the earth, looking for those whose hearts are led to him, so that he will show himself strong on their behalf. I pray for you that the eyes of God will find you. The eyes of God will be upon you. He will protect you. He will defend you. He will sustain you. He will cause your joy to be full in the mighty name of Jesus. I release the blessing of God upon you and I decree over your lives that every of your potential, every greatness that God has put inside of you, it will come to manifestation. It will come to reality. There will be a performance of God's word in your life, in your destiny, in the name of Jesus. I decree over every of you children, you will grow in strength, you will grow in stature, you will grow in wisdom, you will grow in understanding, you will grow in love, you will grow in power. You will grow in anointing. Favor is upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you. You will not die. You will not fail. You will not be in error. But you will be great. The glory of God will be upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everywhere you go. Angels will be with you. Everywhere you go. The presence of God will be with you. Everywhere you go you will be victorious in the name of Jesus. Every one of you uh, children, in all your life, in your destiny, you'll be greater than your parents. What your parents could not achieve, you will achieve much more in the name of Jesus. The world will see the manifestation of the greatness that God has put inside of you. You will be great in possessions. You will be great in wisdom. You will be great in anointing. You will be great in favor. You will be great in the things that you set out to do in your careers, in the future, in the mighty name of Jesus. So this morning, by the authority upon me, I bless you in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Ghost. Beginning from now, your blessings will begin to multiply. You will never be under a curse. Everywhere that curses are coming from, I say they are terminated. 
you will walk in blessings, you will be fruitful, you will have dominion, and your joy will always be full. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And the children of God will say aloud, Amen. And the parents will do what? We say aloud. God bless you. Congratulations. Cover him and his family in the name of Jesus. May the Lord answer all our prayers in Jesus' name. It's time for our tithe and offering. Please, if you are here with your tithe, please can you rise? Our tithe is one tenth of our income, and the Bible says in Malachi 3, verse 10, that I bring you all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven. And pour out for you such blessing that it will not be enough room, that there will not be enough room enough to receive it. It says that as we give our tithes, the windows of heaven, the windows of heaven will open and overflow us with blessings. Begin to speak upon your tithes. Begin to prophesy good things upon your tithes. In Jesus' name, we've prayed. Father, Lord, as your children have obeyed your word and have brought you one tenth of their income, bless them mightily that next time they will come with more in Jesus' name. Amen. Now it's time for our offering. Please may we all rise for our offering. Hold out a bountiful offering as, your, as big as your blessing and prophesy unto your offering. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Choir, give us a song.
Bible Church. Praise the living Jesus. Please, is there anyone worshiping with us for the first time? If you are worshiping with us for the first time, please can you kindly stand up? Please, is there anyone?
Some of us, we have issues dealing with how to prepare for interview. Some of us want to travel. I don't know the process to, to take. Some of us want to so many things. So anything that has to do with improving yourself as a youth, be you a man or a woman, we, we talk about those issues. And we talk about raw facts, practical examples, practical approach to life, how you can be better as a man and how you can be better as a woman. So please don't miss our please. And it's not really that um, short setting. So we have this one-on-one -on -one conversation with our pastor and he helps us. In short, he leaves the pastor and he comes to the friend kind of arrangement. So it's more like, um, it's not a seminar. It's more like a get together, but you get to pour out your mind. So you say the things that are bothering you the way it is. There is no form of um, condemnation. Oh, why are you saying like this? Why are you talking like this? No, we are free. We express ourselves. At the end of the day, we just want every one of us to have a better life. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For some of us who would say, ah, pastor, what about mommy? Mommy will also be there. Mommy, you are going to be there too. Mommy has availed herself to be there. So please, come and pour out your heart to our mommy and daddies. The next one coming up is next week, Saturday. See you there. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord, church. Can you please be on your feet as we sing the anthem?